What's going on, YouTube? You know, Arxis did bless us with a brand new character in Strive, the son of the king himself. Sin Kisuke has hit the scene, and my dude is killing it right now. You guys saw my reaction. I was obviously happy, right? But I took a little bit of time to kind of gather my thoughts, and uh, I want to take this kind of little by little, as methodical as possible. So without any further ado, let me just get right to it. Let's talk about Sin Kisuke, the latest DLC character for Guilty Gear Strive. So where do I begin with this guy, right? Like, not only is my dude looking like, I don't even know how to explain, like, it's like Soul like picked up Sin and was like, dude, what are these loafers that you're wearing? We need to get you some actual drip. Come on, Grandpa, I got you. And he just gave him a brand new fit. He got his Air Max on. It's like, my dude is killing it now. You know, he looks really, really cool. So I'm really happy to see his new design. And with his new design comes so many other new things, right? Visually, he's great. Love his animations. All that's beautiful. I think outright, you know, I'm going to just say it straight up. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think the last two DLC characters have been great. And Sin right now to me is my personal favorite DLC character. Free. No questions asked. I love the way that they've implemented him into the game. He feels a lot more interesting now with his clean hit mechanic with the super. The special moves still do have follow ups, but they're not as free as Exerd which to me makes him that much more interesting. In some ways, he may seem linear because you know he's only gonna do these two options, which I'm gonna get into in a minute. But regardless, it's still kind of like unique to him. And I think that that's a great thing to see. So let me move from that. And let's talk about his gameplay and a little bit of his differences from Xrd. So Xrd, Sin's buttons are a lot faster and Sin's recoveries are a lot faster as well specifically far slash and crouching slash both those normals in this game are a lot slower by a couple frames and they have a little bit more recovery is this bad no what this entails is like you just have to be a lot better with sin in terms of where you place yourself on the screen and where you place your normals it doesn't mean he's horrible or anything like that i have seen some of these guys here on twitter dooming the character saying this that and the other and or box this that and the third uh, that's not really that major i think when people understand how to play him it's a lot different but his attacks are still really strong you know what i mean his forward punch is still really good the same buttons i mentioned the far slash and crouch slash despite the recoveries are st still strong normals like they did change his standing heavy slash and his crouching heavy slash which were both multi-hitting moves in the previous game so they just compensated it in the same fashion and they implemented a new move which was his 6k which essentially can be seen as his old, I think it was 3H in Xrd, where he put the pull down, it was a low as well. Uh, it was a really good counter starter. Uh, but aside from that, like he just translated well. Like I just can't help it. Like he's so fun. Like he's just fun. So Arxis decided to do a couple of things to kind of rearrange his kit, right? So he still has Beak Driver. He still has Hawk Baker, all those different animation. Um, he still has Elk Hunt. So he has like his core moves, you know what I mean? And that's fine. And they all have follow-ups to whatever degree, right? But the most important one of them all to me that's really unique is Gazelle Step. Gazelle Step is his new command dash that can be done after any of his special moves. I think that that adds another layer to his game that he already had before, but now it's like even more integral to his play. It's not something that you have to rely on. It's not something you have to force against your opponent because Gazelle Step does have its pros and its cons. However, it makes him more unique and makes him more interesting than the way it was before. Uh, before, he had pole jump, but he could do it at any given point in time. I do think it's a little weird that Gazelle Step isn't a move on its own, but, but it's attached to his other moves, right? But I think it's okay. It does open up, again, another layer of his game because you don't know what he's going to do after he does, say, Beat Driver and or Elk Hunt. I also think it's interesting that they gave Elk Hunt a Guard Crush follow-up, which is pretty unique. His stamina gauge now in this game to me is more unique and I think it's actually good for him. Like previously, I won't lie to you guys, I didn't like the way it worked before. I thought it was a little too easy to manage. They did readjust it in Rev 2 and 2.1 where it was a lot more different. But in Rev, I have my grievances with it, right? However, I think the way it works now is really unique because it allows you to think a little bit more about what you want to do. Granted, it may seem like it may make sin more predictable but again it, it's not as easy as it sounds or as easy as it looks 
so yeah I, i'm i'm a big fan of this character right now i'm really a big fan of how he operates um i do think that the eat mechanic is a little different but i don't think it's necessarily bad i think that the way he operates in terms of his food mechanic while it doesn't seem like it's necessary i think players should still look and investigate to see exactly what you can do what are from some favorable situations where you can possibly get it i do understand that the buff that you get from it is random because it doesn't give you the food gauge back like that like it did previously but i think people should still explore it and kind of figure out where you can utilize the food mechanic despite its randomness um with that being said there were some things that i did have concern about which were mostly his matchups uh, i spent a lot of time playing him in addition to watching a lot of match videos before making this video and as i looked at certain things um some things were still looking okay it's not necessarily like bleak or anything like that for his matchups but I am a little concerned still about some of the top three characters. Obviously, Nago, HC, Ram, Jacko. But um, I am a little concerned, just a little, about some of those matchups and some other characters as well. Uh, specifically, Axel and Faust. I do believe that those characters will probably give him a tough time. I don't know how bad, but I do know in previous Guilty Gear, Exer, you know, Axel was a really good counter pick towards him. You just didn't really see people use Axel against that character. I've always thought that Faust wasn't that good in Exert either. Again, I'm not the Sin player here, but it looked to me from whenever I did see the match, it did look a little tough from in some cases, but I think it might have been more or less even in that game. But that's Exert. We're not talking about that game. In this version of the game, I did see a tweet from good old Apology Man, shout out to Beneath showing that Faust could crawl underneath a lot of his stuff. I had a gut feeling that that was going to happen this time around, that, that they weren't going to make Beak Driver like what it was in Exerd. So seeing that, you know, Faust can kind of crawl underneath some of that stuff could be a little problematic. Again, I'm not sure exactly how bad it's going to be because I haven't actually sat there and played the matchup myself. So if your sim players have been playing it, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about that matchup. Uh, however, I'm still a little concerned about Happy Chaos. Obviously, I do believe Elk Hunt can work for him in the matchup. It's just, it's not the fastest move, like Stun Dipper, for example. But regardless, uh, Nago, it looks pretty tough. You know, basically just like those three in particular. Like I said, and like Axel and Faust, I think those four or five characters for the most part seem to be like they're going to be somewhat rough. It looks like in general, what I'm trying to say here is like zoning could be the, you know, the anti-sin playstyle. Again, still has yet to be seen. We still don't know enough. You know, let's not doom the character or anything like that. I really think, I'm just going to be honest. I can't say it enough. I Sin is my favorite DLC character right now. Bridget is up there. Obviously Jackal, right, for me. But for the newer for Season 2, I feel like Sin hits like every checkpoint. Um, Every checkpoint I think a DLC character should have in this game. Bridget the same, but I think even more so Sin. He has a lot of good stuff going for him. I personally can't wait to see what people come up with. I'll be messing with it myself. Obviously, I did mention before I will be playing him. I've been playing him pretty extensively already. And he's just he's just a lot of fun, you know? He is a lot of fun. I think there is just so much to explore with him. Like he he may seem basic on the surface, but it's really like I think the reason why I'm saying this to you guys is because I like the fact that like both Bridget and Sin in particular, and I'm not talking too heavy about Bridget here, but both these two new DLC characters have a lot of a lot of things going for them in terms of decision making. I feel like the newest direction for the for season two DLC seems to be more based around the decision making as opposed to just you know pooping out damage like every other character in the game. Not to say that both of those characters don't already do it. Since we're on the topic of Sin, Sin still does his damage. You know what I mean? It's just kind of interesting for me in particular from playing Exert and playing this game and seeing like you know everyone for the most part just kind of oozes out damage and then sin is still doing damage but it's like you know <laughs> uh but he can definitely dish it do not get it twisted that's not what i'm saying i'm definitely saying he can dish out the damage just everyone else dishes out damage roughly the same like he does so he doesn't really stand out in the damage department like everyone else you know what i'm saying like the way he did previously he's still a solid character but the damage department isn't amazing as it used to be uh but i will say what i think is really strong about him is his ability to convert i think when people learn how to whiff punish with him properly at the higher levels of play 
he's going to shine a lot hot, like way 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 more in that regard because big driver is a really good with punish move and then you can Kara cancel it for those that don't know what this is it's a technique where when you do gazelle step you can cancel the gazelle step into a super or overdrive if you will and in this case he can do tyrant barrel and if you can't get the clean hit you can get a lot of damage off of that like we're talking like three four hit combo like into like a lot of damage so if you're able to land that you know what i mean your whiff punishment game is going to be really strong or you whiff punish with a far slash or something of that nature into beat driver into gazelle step tyrant barrel it's like a lot of damage so i think the neat part to me is also with tyrant barrels you can choose to either take the knockdown from the first hit or go for the clean hit and knock them away which is still really neat anyway it goes like you still want to maximize your damage but maybe there'll be other matches where you may not want to go for that additionally rtl is really good <laughs> the fact that you can pull them off of the wall and not break the wall with it is really really strong like it seems to me like they're trying to do things with him and bridget where other characters can't and by that i mean like take people off the wall like the whole wall slump nonsense that's been going on lately it looks like they're they've taken not necessarily just a precaution but they're trying to find newer ways to kind of like eradicate just the wall slump I'm not gonna sit here and say Sin doesn't have something like Wall Slump. I'm sure people will figure it out. It's still early, but um, the fact that he can use RTL to take you off of that scenario is really good. So I can't wait again. Can't wait to see what strategies come about later on for him. But otherwise, I can just say with a straight face, it's looking good, man. I'm I'm. This is my 100% favorite DLC character right now. 100%. Like uh, this is. This is where I'm hoping Guilty Gear Strive continues to go with their characters. If they can do this more, I think that there's a bright future for the DLC. There's other things we got that I'm concerned about as well, but in terms of characters, I think this is the way. I think they can do this a little bit more. And uh, I can't wait to see more for Sin, and I can't wait to show you guys some more of my gameplay with me playing Sin. So let me know how you guys feel about Sin in the comments below. Talk to me. Have you, know, have you guys been enjoying him? Is he what you expected? Not what you expected? Let me know. Talk to me. That being said, it's Kansu signing off. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.